Welcome back everyone to the Dion Training Channel and in this video we're going to be going over CompTIA A plus questions to help you get through your exam. These are some of the questions that a lot of students have problems with so why not make a video explain those questions and how we usually answer them and the methodology behind answering each of those questions so that you can improve your critical thinking skills and get a better score on the exam. If you don't know me my name is Mazen Salama and I'm a CompTIA certified instructor. I've passed A plus, Network plus, Security plus, Plus and a bunch of other certifications that I don't want to bore you with. So let's get right in the video and get into the questions. So most of these questions that I'm going to show you are scenario based questions just because they are the hardest that usually come in the exam. And these are the questions that CompTIA uses to throw students off. Let's get right into it. You are troubleshooting a computer that won't display any output on the screen. First, you power the computer off and on again, noting that the fans were spinning, but there was still no display output. You confirmed that the monitor and video cable were working by testing them with another computer. Next, you reseated the PCIe X16 video card and tried a different video card, but the issue persisted. You checked all power connections inside the case to ensure they were secure. Finally, you tested the computer with minimal components, motherboard, processor, one stick of RAM and power supply. But there was still no display, given the steps taken, what is the most likely cause of the issue? Pretty long scenario here. Let's dissect it and bring out all the information together. But first, let's read the choices so that we can see the options we have. First, it says the CMO's battery needs to be replaced. The motherboard has failed and needs to be replaced. The power supply wattage is too low for the components in the computer. And the power supply's voltage switch is set to 240 volts, but the power outlet is providing 110 volts. Let's do a little process of elimination. First of all, the CMOS battery being dead will not prevent the computer from turning on. It will simply reset your BIOS settings. So that's not really the answer here. And the last one saying the power supply's voltage switch is set to 240, but the power outlet is providing 110 volts. If that was correct, the fans would not be spinning. The computer would not get any power because the power supply is actually not getting enough power from the wall. But in the question, it actually says that the fans were spinning, but there was no display. That means that it is getting some kind of power, but it is not enough. That means the power supply's voltage is actually set right. It is not set to 240 and the power outlet is 110. So you can actually eliminate that option too. So we're left with the motherboard has failed and needs to be replaced, or the power supply wattage is too low for the components in the computer. If the motherboard has failed, we would actually get some kind of beep code that helps us identify this motherboard failure. This is something that a lot of manufacturers put into their motherboard and it's something that you should know. But we actually know from the question that there was no display and no post beep codes. That means that the motherboard is actually functioning and there are no errors with it or with the components. So we can actually eliminate that answer as well. That leaves us with the power supply wattage is too low for the components in the computer. So it can actually provide a little bit of power for the fans to spin and maybe some LEDs to light up, but not enough to get to the post. So let's check the answer. So I hope you understood this question and my mentality behind it. And let's move on to the next one. The next question says, your friend just gave you his old laptop. Whenever you turn on the laptop though, a blank screen appears and asks you to enter an administrative password before the computer attempts to boot up. Unfortunately, your friend never gave you the password for this laptop. Which of the following actions should you take to resolve this issue and get past this password screen. What we're dealing with here is pretty basic. There is a password on the BIOS, not on the operating system itself. This password is set to protect the BIOS and prevent anyone from changing the settings if they wanted to. Let's read the choices, figure out the answer. Disconnect the hard drive from the motherboard for a few minutes, reconnect it, and then power on the laptop. That's just a dummy answer and it will not actually do anything. Disconnecting the hard drive and then putting it back again will not do anything to change the situation. Remove the CMO's battery, wait a few minutes, reinsert the battery, then power on the laptop. We're gonna leave this to last, we can get back to it later. Remove the laptop's battery, wait a few minutes, reinsert the battery, then power on the laptop. Again, this will not do anything, it will not change any kind of settings, and it will not reset anything. 
Finally, press and hold the power button down for a few minutes, then attempt to power on the laptop. If you press and hold the power button for a few minutes while the device is closed, it will only just cycle out all the electricity in the device, but it will actually not do anything. And if you press it while the device is booted up, it will just hard shut off. That leaves us with the last answer, which is remove the CMOS battery, wait a few minutes, reinsert the battery, then power on the laptop. Doing this will actually do something called resetting the BIOS. It will reset the BIOS to its default factory settings, which will actually remove the administrative password on these BIOS, which will actually remove the administrative password on these BIOS and will help you access the device. That means that this one is the correct answer. So let's check it. Click here, check answer, and, and that is the correct answer. So let's move on to the next one. And if you're wondering where all of these questions are coming from, these are actually from our six practice exam course on Udemy that you can purchase by going to deontraining.com slash Udemy. You can also check out our other courses at deontraining.com slash courses and all of our exam voucher offerings at deontraining.com slash vouchers. All right, on to the next question. Susan, a computer technician, received a complaint from a client about an issue with her laptop. Based on the symptoms observed, she believes that there's an issue with the laptop's memory. Which of the following symptoms was most likely observed during their troubleshooting? Okay, so that means that Susan actually checked the device and she thinks that there's an issue with the memory. What the question wants to, to choose here is why she thinks that the problem is with the memory. The question wants you to choose the reasoning behind her thinking. So we're gonna read all of the choices and then I'm gonna pick the right answer and explain it. All right, it says incorrect time in the BIOS, post code beeps, continuous reboots, and a distended capacitor. It says, that there's an issue with the laptop's memory. Well, incorrect time in the BIOS will not be an issue with the laptop's memory. It's probably an issue with the CMOS battery that we talked about earlier. Distended capacitor. A distended capacitor would not relate to anything about the laptop's memory. So that's not really our answer here. The two most arguable answers or the two most arguable, the two most arguable choices would be postcode beeps and continuous reboots. It says in the question that based on the symptoms observed, that means that she was able to actually turn on the device and figure out the symptoms of what is going on with the computer. If the answer was postcode beeps, that would have meant that the device is not turning on at all and they would have mentioned that in the question. This is not a piece of information that they would leave out. And it says that she believes that there is an issue with the laptop's memory. It does not say that the memory has failed. Memory failure can actually lead to postcode beeps, but it does not say that it has failed completely. So the answer here is actually continuous reboots. Check the answer, that is correct. The reasoning behind choosing continuous reboots is all what I've said before, and that continuous reboots is one of the things that happen when memory starts having issues or starts getting slower, or, or maybe there's a problem with the memory module itself, your device will start slowing down, rebooting all the time, getting very laggy and slow. That was one of the more nuanced questions that I want you to understand because these are very important for the exam. And let's move on to the next one. The question says, Dion Training has recently purchased a new wireless printer and has asked you to configure it in their office. You have installed the necessary printer drivers on your workstation and have plugged the printer into your power outlet. You just configure the printer to connect to the guest wireless network. Next, you try to print a test page but nothing prints out. Which of the following is most likely the cause for the printer not printing the test page? Okay, let's read the choices here. You didn't enable DHCP on your workstation. You forgot to configure your workstation as a print server. You didn't configure the printer to use the internet printing protocol. You connected the printer to the guest wireless network instead of the corporate wireless network. Well, basically, you didn't enable DHCP on your workstation. That does not relate to the printer at all. So that's not the answer. You forgot to configure your workstation as a print server. Most of the time, you will not need to configure a print server if you're connecting a plug and play printer like most of the printers on the market. So that's not actually the answer. You didn't configure the printer to use the internet printing protocol. Well, that is another protocol that you don't have to actually configure the printer to use. Most of the printers will come and they will use the necessary protocols in order to print. However, I wanted to include this question because it has some little detail that the answer is actually hidden in the question itself. And all of these other answers are just there to throw you over. 
you connected the printer to the guest wireless network instead of the corporate wireless network. So the question says that Dion Trading has asked you to configure it in their office. That means this is a corporate network, this is a corporate setting. However, you just configured the printer and connected it to the guest wireless network. That's why it's not working, because the computer is not able to connect to the printer because it's on the guest network, not on the corporate network. And that's why if you choose you connect the printer to the guest network, check the answer. That is the correct answer here. All right, let's move on to the last question of today's video. And it says, on Tuesday evening, the company just pushed a new Windows 10 security update to all of its workstations. On Wednesday morning, the help desk receives numerous complaints about the network being slower than normal. Previously, the network was baselined at 1 gigabits per second as each workstation used a wired cat sex connection. Today, a technician ran a speed test and saw that the network was only reaching speeds of 100 megabits per second. Which of the following is most likely the cause of the network slowdown? Okay, so there was some kind of security update that was pushed to all of the workstations in the company on Tuesday evening. And the issue started coming on on Wednesday morning. So probably this is something that has to do with the update. All right, let's get into the choices and figure out what's right and what's wrong. The incorrect DHCP server configuration is being used. Okay, if the incorrect DHCP server configuration is being used, that will most likely lead to the devices not being able to get IP addresses and will not be able to communicate at all. They will not be able to access it at all. But in the question, it says that they are accessing the internet just at slower speeds, which means that they are actually getting IP addresses correctly and the DHCP server is working. The incorrect DNS server configuration is being used. Well, again, if the, D if the incorrect DNS server was being used, they would not be able to access the internet, they would not be able to log into websites and test their speeds, which means that correct DNS settings are being used and that's not the cause of the issue. The network was reconfigured from DHCP to static. Well, that's just another answer to throw you off. This does not relate to the question at all. If some of the devices are not configured to use DHCP and they're configured to use static addresses, they should still be able to use the network at full speed. And the last answer, which is actually the correct answer, the network Network card drivers were updated last night, which is actually the correct answer because sometimes when a security update or any kind of update is pushed, it will actually update some drivers, including the network drivers, which could lead to these drivers actually being reset to a lower or more default setting than the one currently used by the network or the devices. So basically that is the correct answer here. And if we click, check the answer. That is correct. I hope you guys liked this video. If you liked it, hit the like button, comment down below. Let me know what kind of videos you want to see from the Dion Trading channel. And don't forget to check out DionTrading.com for the best IT certification courses out there and the best prices on exam vouchers anywhere on the web. See you in the next one.